one convention Miami. We are here to experience yet another amazing coach, philosopher, guy who works with men on a different level of teaching them to open up, connect, use themselves from within and project it out to the world. He's from the fearlessman.com, Mr. Brian Bajan. Thank, Thank you. I need to have him introduce me all the time. Uh, I like the part about the philosopher, that was kind of nice. Um, so how's everybody doing? Did y'all have a good lunch? Yeah. It lo energy looks a little low. We'll see if we can bring that up a little bit. Um, now who's, uh, has anybody seen me speak before? A couple of you? Robbie. Um, okay, I have one guy in here that's missing. I want him in here, but he'll, he'll probably show up later. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, but I'm going to keep it really short so I can dive right into the talk because I lo I've only got an hour and uh, I do like to talk. And so I need to kind of cut that down. So um, I started out extremely shy, uh, super shy to the point where, who's, who's sort of agoraphobia? Anybody? Okay, agoraphobia basically means you don't want to leave the house. And uh, when I started this journey, that's basically where I was. I didn't want to leave the house. I was scared to death of people. I was scared to death to go out in public and, and kind of socialize. I couldn't talk to anybody hardly. And that became my mission in life. When I, uh, when I graduated high school, I realized that if I didn't do something about this, I was going to spend my, my life miserable and alone. I looked at a lot of people that I knew in my life that were, had lives like that as I got older, and it just it, it scared me. And so a lot of this journey for me was about fear in the beginning. It was about stepping through fear and the fear of becoming what I envisioned for my future was greater than the fear of what I had to face. And that's what got me started. Who's been down that road where you're, you're kind of scared to, it's a good, good. It's a good place to be because at least it gets you moving, right? And, um, and so I had to sell all my video games, my computers, my D&D, &D, all the stuff I did with my really uh, introverted friends, and I started this journey. I read every personal growth book I could find, and I did that for like 10 years. The problem was, and this was the big problem, was that my life was not changing. Not changing the way I wanted it to. I had a lot of knowledge. I could talk a good game. I could tell people what they could do in their lives to change their lives. And a lot of people changed their lives, but my life wasn't changing. And I didn't understand why. And it wasn't until I figured out, like years later, I, I stopped reading all the, the, the books and I started actually taking action. It started with me going to a hypnotherapy college and I spent a year in this college where we actually spent a lot of time not reading, not studying, but learning to feel learning to relate to what we were feeling inside and shifting our emotions. And then I continued on with various teachers, some of, some of whom Robbie knows about back there. And that's when my life really started to change. That's when huge shifts started to happen. And so I remember this period in my life where I had, uh, I had recently uh, moved into a yoga community. I, I figured I wanted to complete change. I wanted to completely throw everything out the window. And I'd always had this idea that I needed to be, be safe. I needed a good job. I needed to have my cubicle job. I needed to have my good retirement. I didn't want to rock the boat. You know, my family was always saying, don't, don't take any risk, be safe. And I reached a limit with all that. I'd been studying a lot, learning a lot, working really hard. And I decided to take this risk and I got rid of everything I owned. And I moved into this crazy yoga I call it the yoga cult now, but it was a, a yoga community. He had one bag of stuff, the whole, the whole bit. And I spent a year of my life there. And I thought to myself when I moved in there that I'm a really spiritual guy. I'll meet a nice, cute, spiritual yogini. You know, this is where I'll shine because I study so much spirituality. And I studied so much knowledge. These girls will like me. The problem was that when I got in there, these girls didn't like me. They saw me as a project to be fixed. And I couldn't understand why that was. These girls looked at me as still, like there was still something not right about me, but I'm like, I'm just like you. I'm a, I'm a spiritual guy just like you. And they still weren't attracted to me. And this is the, the part that really got me was this guy moves in. Now he had no place to go. He had just got out of jail. 
He had no car, no money, no job, and he's on parole. And what do you think happened? Every girl in there wanted him. He was a magnet for every one of these spiritual girls. They chased him. I had a, I had a really good friend, Kathy, who used to hang out down there with me a lot. And the moment she saw him, she went nuts. And she's like, she couldn't get enough of him. She talked about him constantly. And she kept saying, Dan this, Dan that. I, got, I, I, I want to hang out with Dan more. And I didn't get why this was. And I would ask her, I'd pull her aside and say, what is it about him? Is he better looking than me? And you know, what's going on? And she said, no, he's not really better looking than you. It's just that he's got this energy. He's got something about him. And I didn't understand what it was. So I decided I could either hate this guy, which I did for a little while, or I could actually become his friend. And so I ended up uh, doing something that was probably pretty stupid, if you look back on it, was I moved into a three-bedroom apartment with him and Kathy. And uh, he, again, he's on parole, has no job, no money, but I, I, I said, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyways. because so I want to see what it's like to be around this guy all the time. And when I moved in with him, it was really interesting because he gets on match. He borrows the money to get on match, and there's one girl after another coming over to the apartment all the time. And I hear him giggling and laughing. I hear him arguing with them. I hear him saying stuff that I would never say. I hear him being cocky. I hear him being arrogant. Yet these women love him. And I couldn't understand why that was. And what I didn't realize at the time was that I was your consummate nice guy. I was nice to a fault. I didn't want to rock the boat at all. I didn't want to upset anybody. I didn't want to bother anybody. I didn't want to push anybody's boundaries. So I was always trying to get rid of all the tension in any conversation and make everything smooth all the time. Anybody guilty of that? Okay. It sucks, doesn't it? Because when you take all the tension out of a conversation, what happens? You make it boring. You become boring. You become uninteresting to women and to other people often. And so that's the problem that nice guys have. They're, caught, they're kind of in a catch-22. And so my life went on, and, and I want to add this one story. I don't usually talk about it, but it was interesting because we were talking about Jason Savage earlier. So uh, who knows Jason Savage? Anybody? He's kind of a legend in, in uh, 21 Convention. Uh, you guys should look up his YouTube talk for 21. But um, he comes over, and I'd been living there a while, and I got to know Jason and a bunch of other people. And so Jason comes over. Now, Jason could be my brother. I've been told this many times. He's about my height. He looks like me. He's built like me. And Kathy is five foot 11. She's, uh, she's, on, she's an Amazon. She loves to wear heels. And she's, she'd always say, I could never date you, Brian. She'd poke at me all the time. I could never date you, Brian. You're just too short. And she'd just say this stuff randomly to me. And at the time, I didn't understand what was going on. I'd just get frustrated. I'd be like, fuck you. You know, just, just leave me alone. And so Jason comes over one day. She meets him. She talks to him for 10 minutes, turns to me and goes, I'd fuck him. Now my mind immediately goes, wait a minute, he's the same height as me. He could be my brother. He looks just like me. There's something wrong with this here. And that's when I really sat down and thought about it. And I said, it's really just energy. It's again, it's about who you're being and not what you're doing. Because I had the proof right there. And uh, it, 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 it kind of shocked me at that point. So. Looking at all this, what I was doing at that point was I was, I had reached my kind of my limit and it was time for me to break fear of fear. <clears throat> I was afraid of fear. That's why the company is called The Fearless Man because I'm always facing more fear. What can I do to step, step to the next level? How can I step into more tension all the time? How can I keep moving in that direction? Because that's what grows the masculine. Now I had a teacher, um, uh, who knows who David Nagel? Anybody know? I like to credit anybody if I can. Okay, David Nagel is a, a business mentor. He was a business mentor of mine. And he said, he, he said something that was really important to me once, and it really kind of affected me huge. And he said that, um, he called it the curse of the middle class. And he was talking about what the middle class values over everything else. And I kind of already mentioned it. Can anybody guess what that is? Security. Security. Stability. The middle class always says what? What, what, what do they say? Get a good job. Get a good retirement. Don't rock the boat. But as a man, what do you want to do? You want to go out and pursue a dream, right? You want to go out and make something happen. I'm going to go start a business. I'm going to go, I don't know, 
climb a, climb a mountain. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna become a race car driver, whatever it is. But whatever you wanna do is gonna involve stepping into fear, i.e. tension. It's gonna involve stepping into tension. And can you see that that's always gonna be stepping out of this comfort zone? That's always gonna be risking something, not chasing security, but doing the opposite. But yet, if you're in the middle class, and I'm assuming most of you are, then your programming is don't rock the boat. And this is where men today are losing their sense of purpose, losing their sense of passion. You see, we crave tension, and we've lost the reality of that. We crave polarity, which is what tension creates. We crave it so much that we have to go get regular doses of it, especially if we don't have it in our lives. Like, for example, how many of you, um, how many of you go to the movies and love movies that have a lot of tension, action stars, things like this in it? Who goes to watch movies all the time? Reads books, things like this. What's happening in those movies? You're getting your dose of tension. You might watch a movie where, you know, that latest born movie where he kicks ass, right? And then you leave the movie wanting to learn martial arts, wanting to learn to kick ass, and that lasts for about a day. And then your life goes back to being numb again because you don't want to step into tension. You want everything to be easy. But if you learn to be uncomfortable, you're going to have a very easy life. If you're chasing an easy life, you're going to be very uncomfortable. Because we need that tension to feel alive. Now, nothing grows without tension. Nothing grows without tension. Think about it. Even a seed. If I put a seed in the ground and bury dirt on top of it, it's, it has to break through the shell. It has to dig roots. It has to grow upwards. It has to grow into a tree, right? And that's done under tension. That's done under pressure. It has to fight its way through the dirt sometimes through rock, sometimes through concrete, to become a tree, through seasons, through weather. But in that, that's what makes it what it is. And that's what grows it into a tree. Well, it's the same thing with humans. I mean, think about sex. Sex is tension, right? And then the resolution of tension. How about sperm? Who's, who's read the book Sperm Wars? Did you guys know that sperm actually battle? There's sperm that actually have different uh, mechanisms for battling to be the one to uh, inseminate the egg, I think is how it works. And uh, it's pretty crazy stuff. And then it has to bust through the wall of the egg, and then a baby grows in nine months in a womb and is born through the birth canal. The first thing it experiences a lot is a lot of tension. Learning to walk, learning to talk. And then it's, there's, just, there's this weird thing where we become an adult, we graduate from high school or college, and then we want to stay the same and stop growing. But the nature of life is growth. You can't stop growing or you start dying. Life is more, right? Every day you're going to have more experience of life. You can't get away from that. If you're focusing on making money, maybe you'll have a greater experience of making money. If you're focusing on the fear of losing money, maybe you'll have a greater experience of poverty every day. And that'll grow. But the experience grows. The experience you, you have in life grows. So if you're looking for a way to meet women without experiencing tension, without going through fear, or to build a business, or to make sales, it's never going to happen. I run into a lot of people that say, I, I, I worked for a company that did this. They would say, after this weekend, you're going to be one of the most sexiest men in the world, in the top 1%, and it's a crock of shit. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes stepping into tension, it takes resolution of tension before you grow and evolve into the man you're going to become. The same thing as building muscles. You got to learn to step into tension to build muscle, right? But how many of you are trying to find a way around the tension? How many of you are trying to find a way, the, like, if I get just the right formula, I can figure it out, and then I'll step to the other, and then, then I won't have to go through all that pain. But you don't realize it's that pain that makes you who you are. Now, think of any successful, who, who has somebody they admire that's really successful? Okay, give me, Brian, give me one. Oh, I love, thank you, that's my favorite one. Does Richard Branson step into a lot of tension? Yeah. If you read his autobiography, he, uh, he started his first business in high school, student magazine, and he would go after high school to a payphone he would, call, he would pick up the payphone, call the operator, tell her he lost his money in the payphone. 
she would then place his call for him to the, uh, uh, to the person he was trying to sell an ad to for his magazine, and it sounded like he had an opera, uh, uh, excuse me, a secretary. So she would say something like, I got Mr. Branson on the phone, I want to put him through, and he's really a high school kid. They have no idea he's a high school kid, and he was selling ad space in a magazine. That's how he started. Now he's worth about seven billion, I think. And if you, look, if you read that book, it's called Losing My Virginity. In that book, his whole childhood, his parents raised him to walk right into tension, take risks, do it again, keep moving for it, keep going for it. And they didn't stop. Who's somebody else? Who's somebody else that's successful you really admire? Anybody? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Does he step into a lot of tension? Did he not almost lose everything creating Tesla? Almost everything. Okay, so if you think you're going to become successful without stepping into tension, it's really unlikely. This is a realization you got to get in your head. Now, I want to um, I want to add a caveat to that. A lot of people step into tension a lot and don't get success. Is there anybody in that room that does that? Anybody right now? Okay, not many. Um, I every, every once in a while I run into a client who bulldozes. He's just like plows and he's, and he's pushing, 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 but his life's not changing. And if anybody's like that in the room, there's a reason for that. Uh, you're stepping into a lot of tension, but you're not developing. What happens is we call it state pumping. When you state pump up, pump, 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 pump all the time, and you're no longer feeling, you're no longer in relationship to your emotions while stepping into the tension, you don't grow. You actually go backwards. You have to stay, re learned, you have to learn, like here's your line, I'm going to step across it, I'm going to get used to this, then I'm going to step across it, and I'm going to get used to this. Because if I try to jump, like I call it jumping the Grand Canyon, if I try to jump that Grand Canyon and jump way over there, what's going to happen is it's going to be so much tension, my whole nervous system's going to shut down on me, it's going to be like a circuit breaker popping, and I can't grow anymore. I'll actually go backwards. And I see a lot of people doing that. They go out and state pump, state pump, state pump, especially guys going out learning to talk to girls and they're not feeling. They're going up to girl after girl, talking to her with no emotional connection, blasting her with all this emotion, and then wondering why they're getting rejected by one girl after another. Anybody have that experience? Okay. So it's about developing a relationship to your nervous system in relation to tension. And that tension's gotta be in flow. We call it tension and resistance when you're not in flow with it. Who's, so a lot of you have had massages, right? So everything is tension. If you get too weak of a massage, it sucks, right? It's not enough pressure. If you get too strong of a massage, it hurts. Like you don't want that anymore. But if you get that just right, doesn't it feel good? That's that tension in flow. That's that tension in the just the right spot. That's where you grow. That's where you get stronger. That's where you get more powerful. So to really bring this point home, and then I'm gonna jump into something else, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a TED Talk. There's a TED Talk by Kelly McGonigal. It's about 17 minutes long. Who's, has anybody seen it? How to Make Stress Your Friend. So for, this, for, for, for the purpose of this discussion, stress and tension are the same. Okay? So in this TED Talk, she, uh, she talks, she's a health psychologist, and she talks about how throughout her whole career, she had been telling people to get all the stress out of their lives. They've got to get the stress out of your life. It's going to kill you. And she came to the realization one day that she had been telling everybody all wrong. It was because of this study. The study was done over eight years. They studied 30,000 people. They asked all the people, do they have a lot of stress, medium stress, or little stress in their lives? And do they think stress is bad for them or good for them? And at the end of the eight years, two groups stood out. The group that said they had a lot of stress and the stress was bad for them, and the group that said they had a lot of stress and the stress was good for them. The group that had said the stress was bad for them had the most deaths, most illnesses, most problems, most challenges in their lives. The group that said they had the stress was good for them had the most successes, the greatest, the best health, the most gains over the eight years. In both cases, they had a lot of stress. The only difference was what? Somebody say it. Mindset. Mindset. So she came to the realization that the belief stress was bad for you was the real problem, not the stress itself. And then when you change the belief, and they actually did studies on their hearts, when they changed the beliefs, the way the uh, capillaries respond, it was completely different. When they thought the stress was bad for them, they would close up and tighten. When they thought the stress was good for them, they would open and actually oxytocin would uh, go into the body, causing them to relax more, causing them to grow, causing a whole different response in the heart. 
So stress really isn't the problem. It's that relationship to stress. As you become, and I, always, I liken it to building muscles, as you become good with tension, which is what builds masculine, masculinity, which, which builds your attractiveness, as you become good with tension, you start to become more attractive to the world. You start to become more powerful to the world. Who in high school gets all the girls, right? Is it, do, the, do the nerds get the girls? Who? Somebody say it. Jock, jock. Jocks, right? Do jocks have a good relationship to tension? Yeah, they have, you have a better on average than the, than the nerds, right? How about artists? That's another group that sometimes gets the girls, depending on the artist, right? But artists also, they're stepping into a lot of it, which is the next piece I'm going to talk about if I, if I have time here, is the vulnerability piece. When you're good with tension and then you add this little bit of vulnerability, this ability to feel emotions and relate. And I'm not talking about like, I'm not talking about fake feel emotions through routines and stuff, but actually feel people's emotions. It changes everything. But if you start to feel emotions without the tension piece, it doesn't work. You become needy and insecure. You see, it's, it's, like, it's just like, a, um, think of a hose. The hose itself is the tension. Inside the hose is the water. It's the emotion. So as I start to feel tension with you, and I relax, I start to feel more emotion inside that tension. It's the conduit for me to you to connect. And you can actually build this skill. I can just start connecting to you and dropping in and feeling you more and more, relaxing with you. Can you feel that difference? Can you feel it? So it changes everything. It's actual skill that you can practice, and it's who you're being before you say a word. It's who you're being before you go out there and start figuring out what to say. It's, it comes from your core inside. It's before you even move a muscle. And when you change your beingness, then the words don't matter that much. A hi to somebody who's nervous and insecure. Hi, how are you? Feels like this. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Something like that. There's a million variations of it. But when you drop down and relax and say hi, it has a whole different effect on the people around you. This is why you're never going to find the right words if you haven't worked on your nervous system. You're never going to find the right things to say. It's just not going to happen. Because until you change who you're being at a core level, deep down inside, you can say all the perfect things, just like, the guy, like your buddy who's like great with women, and it's still not going to work. This applies to sales. This applies to building a business and training employees. Because there's a masculine and feminine in everything. If I'm, if I'm the salesman, most likely the person I'm selling to is going to be the feminine and we're going to go into a dance. If I'm the CEO of a company, my employees are going to be the feminine. We're going to go into a dance. So this changes every part of your life. This is, for me, it's changed my health because I was extremely sick. It's changed my income because my, I, I grew up in a very poor family. It's changed my relationship to women. It's changed the way I view women, because I had a lot of anger and bitterness towards women for years, and now I just think women are fucking amazing. And the women that show up in my life are amazing. They're awesome, giving people, because I've shifted that whole reality in this area. So, men are built to be grounded. You're built to be masculine, you're built to be solid. And I want to promise you, you, all, you can all be good with women if you want to step into the tension and learn about it. How do I know this? Because of the law of polarity. Who's heard of polarity? Law of polarity. It's an unfailing law, right? It's everywhere. Where there's an up, there's a down. Where there's a left, there's a right. If a stick is four feet from right to, uh, left to right, it's four feet from right to left. To have something in the physical world, there has to be polarity. That's why we have men and women, masculine and feminine. If you're a man and you're built to be masculine, then you're built to attract feminine women. That's the polarity. Polarity attracts its opposite. The problem is if you're not attracting the women you want in your life, just like women are built to attract men, if you're not attracting them, there's something between you and your natural ability that you were designed to do. It's not about so much learning a bunch of fancy techniques. It's about stripping away the bullshit that's going on inside you that keeps you from naturally polarizing and pulling that energy towards you. It's getting rid of those stories and understanding what it is. 
and kind of letting it shine. Does that make sense to everybody? Awesome. So I believe every one of you can be successful. I work really hard to help my clients be successful. We put out a lot of free information on the YouTube channel for this reason. And it's, it's, it's really about you deciding you're going to choose it and go get it. But to go get it, you have to step into that tension again. And it's going to be uncomfortable. You have to move in ways you've never moved before. You have to do things you've never done before. And in that, you grow new muscles. You grow new abilities. And it's about a feeling, not, an, not a thought, not, a, not an idea, but it's an actual feeling that you feel with other people. When you're doing it, you feel the tension. You feel the tension from another person. And that's where you grow. A lot of you do it, like I talked about earlier, with your heads down, closed, pushing, forcing, and that won't work. So I really want to illustrate this, this point today. Um, because a man that's great with tension just has a whole different set of subcommunication. He has a whole different way of communicating with the world. He has a whole different way of connecting with people. And uh, you guys all, have all talked about subcommunication before, right? Microexpressions, subcommunication, all that kind of stuff. Well, we're constantly affecting everybody around us. Who's, who's heard the statistic that 97% of the communication is nonverbal? Okay. When you're good with tension, it changes. When you start to get really good and enjoy the tension, like a dance, like, right, a good dance has tension in it, right, guys? Like, you need that tension. If I'm going to do, let's say I'm going to do a, a tango or something like that, if I don't have the tension from the woman, the dance collapses. I can't do it. It doesn't work right. And so that a good dance has tension. Every bit of connection, whether you're selling somebody, dating a girl, whether you're flirting, whether you're seducing, all has uh, tension in it. And there's this flow of tension back and forth. You can actually feel it. It's not something you think about. It's something you feel. When you, um, anybody in here uh, surf? Anybody in here do a sport? OK. You have to feel the surfboard, right? You can't, I mean, even the guys that don't surf know this. You can't think about surfing and do it. It has to become part of your nervous system, right? I can't sit here and think, move this way, move this way. It's impossible. I'd fall right off the board. Same thing with martial arts, right? If, if, you're, if you're sparring, if you're thinking, you're going to get hit. Well, it's the same thing with flirting. It's the same thing with dancing. It's the same with communicating. I mean, I remember the days early on when I'd have a whole, uh, remember the routine stacks, right? And I'd have them all in my back pocket, all the things to say, how to say them, what I should say, when I should say it. And I'd go, to, go in the bathroom, and I'd start reading through it and trying to figure out all the... Uh, the right stuff to say, and then I come back out and say it. It doesn't work because I'm not dealing with the, the actual feeling aspect, the dancing aspect. Once you've got that, you don't need any of that stuff anymore. You have to train your nervous system to feel it, though. So I want to talk about this subcommunication for a minute because it's super important. Now, I want to do a, a play with it a little bit so you can realize how deep it goes. Because when you hear that idea that only 7% of communication is words, and 93% 90, is nonverbal, it seems kind of far-fetched, right? Does it? I hear a lot of people say that, but a lot of you guys still keep focusing on what do I say? What do I say? How do I say it, right? Well, how do I say it's probably more correct. And so we want to play with that a little bit. Um, I'm going to invite Giselle up here really quick. Everybody give her a round of applause, please. Do I have a volunteer? It's really simple, by the way. You're not going to do anything too crazy. Anybody? Awesome. OK, come on over here. So give him a round of applause for coming up. I'm going to have you stand right here. OK. OK, all you're going to do, did I have you do this last time? No. OK, so um, take one more step back. So all he's going to do is he's going to walk up and he's just going to say hi to her or shake her hand. And I want you guys to notice how you feel when he does that. Not what you think, not what you analytically think he did, what worked, didn't work, but how you feel inside when he does that. Notice how your body feels, because that's more how women think, right? Women look and they go, what do I feel from this guy? They don't sit there and go, what do I analytically think about him? That's, that's the difference. So pay attention to how he makes you feel. OK, go. Hi, hi. I'm Leo. How are you doing? I'm fine. Great. Nice Good. to meet you. Good. So how did he feel, guys? You give me the feedback first. Anybody? Anybody? Like he's having fun. Say, say it again a little louder. I feel like he's having fun. Okay. Anybody else? Comfortable. Happy. Comfortable. Laugh. OK. 
Okay. What did you say? Happy. Happy. Okay, I'd say all that's true. Come on, come on. How do you feel to you? Um, great eye connection. Like. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was decent. Secure. I don't know. Did you feel? Now the question I would have is, how much of his masculine did you feel? Um, in percentage. Yeah. Did you feel a lot of his masculine, or did you feel? Did he feel sweet? Did he feel nice? Uh, sweet. Sweet. So would he be? A, from a feminine perspective, would he be sexually attractive? Or would no. he be, okay, okay, so that's, that's the problem I saw. You also, after it was over, you bailed on her really fast. You, were, you got nervous, 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 then you turned towards me really fast and bailed on her. So come, come up here a little bit. You, get, you remember doing that? Mm -hmm. Okay, step forward. You can get a little closer. She won't bite. Okay, now I want you to look right in her eyes. Straighten your head for me. Straighten your head. There you go. Now, feel your heart. Relax that smile a little bit. Relax right here in your cheeks. Right here, relax right there, awesome, there you go. Now, feel the tension, find that tension. Are you finding it? Good, now come down to your gut, right here. Feel right here, good. Now, ask your body to connect to hers, right from your gut to hers, like if you could feel, there you go. Lower your head a little bit more. Now, narrow your gaze. Now, in that tension, while feeling here, say hi for me. Hi. Good, now, say hi into her a little bit more, like as if you're gonna penetrate her with your hi. Hi. Okay. 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 What, what was the difference? No, now I feel him. <laughs> okay. She's never done this before. I just, I just met her today. So, um, how'd that feel? Uh, like the moment that we step, like mm -hmm. it's immediately sexual. It's not like, hello. Uh, it's, yeah. it's immediately. Yeah. First of all, just, just the fact that we close. Mm -hmm. it's you could have been sexual. farther back. You step, step farther back. You can still do it farther back. It, I just had to step close because I knew I was going to push your boundaries. Because um, I wanted to push your boundaries so you'd feel a lot of tension, so you could learn to relax in it. Because what you were doing, you cocked your head sideways. Yeah, that's more feminine. You did a lot of feminine gestures to decrease the tension when you first came up. It was really sweet, but there was none of your power. Can Go I ahead. say? Something? Yeah, please. Uh, when you speak, speak um, just so make sure. Okay, you when you when you um, relax your jaw, like your smile. You look more masculine to me. How do I explain that? You just did. You explain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because your smile was covering. The smile wasn't real. It was a fake smile covering up some other emotions. That's why I had you drop it. A real smile looks really different. It, it, it has a whole different feel to it. And uh, I encourage real smiles. But when you just do this, it, it has a, it creates it creates a strange effect in other people. I mean, it wasn't fake. Like I just feel good. I, I was. Uh Dinner with people, I had interaction with people. I'm not saying you weren't happy, but the smile was, was more the way it felt from my years of doing this. It didn't feel real. So that's what she's saying, too. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Well, if you repeat the question, if I find him attractive sexually, I will say yes. And the second time he came to me closer, he looked at me in the eyes and he relaxed his jaw. I saw him very masculine. Yeah. So yeah. I will, yeah, definitely feel attractive. Good. Do you feel that difference? Yeah, uh, I felt, but the difference, whether because I concentrated here yeah. on my belly, or because we just was stepping like this, which is already we're already feeling sexual tension, just the fact that we we're very close. Where, where, where do you feel your sexual tension from? Up here? <coughs> you guys, do you think he feels turned on from his head? Where do you have to feel in your body to feel turned on? Low in your body. So if you want to feel your turn on, you better not be in your head. Because if you come at a girl just all from energy from your head, how's that going to feel? It's probably going to scare her off. Okay? Because it's going to be intense. It's going to be like this, kind of creepy almost sometimes. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, you feel emotions through your body, through your nervous system. You don't feel emotions from up here. You're not going to use logic to turn a girl on. I, I've never met a guy yet who's used their, their analytical mind to turn a girl on. Not, not once. Okay? So if you found one, send them to me. I'd be impressed. Okay? So thank you. Good job, though. Great, great job. Thank you. Um, does anybody else want to do this real quick, one time? Got one more volunteer? Come on up, buddy. Okay, I'm going to have you stand in the same spot. Give him a round of applause. Step, step a few feet back, just so you can experience walking up, okay?
Okay. So I go ahead and just look her in the eyes. Okay. Walk up. Hold that tension. Good. And then say hi and shake her hand. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good. So uh, go ahead and step back real quick. How does he feel, guys? Yeah, nervous. Now, I'm going to give the guys credit. They're up here. They're on camera. Everybody's watching. It's, it's a whole added element. But then at the same time, if you're walking up to a girl you think is more beautiful than any girl you've ever seen before, and she's standing with all her friends, and they're all watching, that kind of simulates that same energy, doesn't it? So, um, so there was a lot of nervousness. Now, what you didn't do, you didn't, you didn't like do a lot of weird stuff where you turned your head away. You stayed in the tension. You, 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 you worked with the tension, but there was a lot of nervousness. You locked out up here. You need to relax down your body more. So c come forward. Did you want to say something? Um, come yeah, forward a little bit. A lot right? of tension. A lot of tension. I don't know if it's here. It might be here. Could you feel his emotions? I sometimes I do feel emotions. <laughs> People don't ask me that. Did you feel his emotions? Um, I feel he was, he was trying to control here and not letting go here. Okay. Like here okay. and here. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly what I thought too. So, did you guys get that? She said she felt like he was trying to do it from here and not letting go here and here. Okay? Okay. So look her in the eyes again. Okay, now what I want you to do is feel your heart. Just feel right there. That's it. Ask your heart to talk to her heart. Like as if you can make a bridge and breathe right down the front like a waterfall. There you go. Soften. Cool. Now ask it to, now even if you get scared, don't hide the fear. What you're going to do is let her see your fear and walk through it anyways and show up fully anyways. Good. Do you feel him more? Okay, good. See if you can come a little lower. See if you can feel your stomach now. There you go. Good. That's it. That's it. Now, we're just going to play here. We want to go ultimately go all the way down the front of the body, but for the first, first time I'm doing this with him on stage, I want to stop right here. Feel right there. There you go. Now, say hi from here. Stay, stay down there. Don't go up to say hi. Hi. See how, hi. See how, he, goes how up? he goes up a little bit to say hi. Did you feel that? So hum for me. Hum until you can feel my hand. Feel my hand. So you can feel this right here. There you go. Okay, now say hi from there. Hi. Good. Now, hi. How now are you? Narrow your gaze a little bit. Look into her. Enjoy your attraction. Enjoy your turn on. And say hi. 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 How are you? Is it getting better? Now you got some work to do because you're running from your turn on. Can you feel that? What's it like to allow yourself to be attracted to a beautiful woman? Can you do that? And, and own it. Own it, just like that. Own it, feel right here. And then when you speak, own it with every syllable. Now say hi. Hey. Good. Hi, how Good. are you? Okay, did that, how'd that one feel? <laughs> I see you like that one. Good. <laughs> Good, how'd that feel for you? I feel he connects with me with, when he's looking at me, but when he wants, to, when he speaks, he goes back. Yeah. So is, he's really connected here now, but I guess yeah. he just let it go up here. This is a problem I run into a lot with highly analytical people. When they speak, they can get it f saying nothing, and when they speak, they go back up to, 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 uh, to process the words, because they're not used to letting their words flow. And so it takes a little practice, and that's why I have them do the humming exercise a lot until they can really feel what it's like to feel down here while they speak, or feel down here even. Um, let's give them one more shot. Let's get a hum right here. There you go, keep coming down. Now feel your turn on while you hum. For her. There you go. Relax it a little bit, just keep feeling it. There you go. Now, can you, can you say hi? That's like that. Say, keep feeling that. Just the, if you have to whisper it out at first, whisper it. Hi. Good. Hi. How are you? Now narrow that gaze and be more penetrating a little bit and say hi again. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. How does that feel? New. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. Do you see more connection here? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. Do you feel it? <laughs> she feels it. Okay. Do you, question I always have is I know the women feel it. Do you guys feel it? Okay, go ahead and step over here real quick. Thank you. Thank you.
job. <laughs> Do you guys feel it? Do you feel the difference? See, the, the problem I see is people are working too much on what they're saying and they're not fixing the little tiny subtle subcommunication that's happening under the surface first. And then you put the words on top of that once you've got it. Now it's a lot of 1%, right? There's this 1% and that 1%. And then they'll get it with the high, then they start to actually have a conversation and they're right back up again. So it takes some practice to get the nervous system to relax into these new states of being. But when they do, they're very powerful, okay? Um, so I wanna do one more quick thing. Now we talked about polarity, right? I'm gonna have you step right over here. We talked about polarity, right? And polarity is this idea that there's a, a dance of the masculine and the feminine. What is the masculine? The masculine is like a picture frame. The feminine is the art, it's the expression. Okay, wouldn't you rather look at her more than me? That's, that's kind of the balance, right? And the riverbanks are the masculine, but the water is the feminine, the water is flowing, the riverbanks are more still. So when the feminine feels you show up in the midst of her, let's say you got a mountain and the weather pattern's beating on the mountain, the weather being the feminine, the mountain being the masculine. When the feminine feels you show up, even in, in all her emotion, because most guys shut down at the face of a woman's emotions, right? When the feminine feels you show up in the midst of all her emotions, that makes her happy. It turns her on. So let's say she gets mad at you for something, but you stay solid and grounded and you show up anyways in the midst of her anger. That can turn her on. That can make her happy. You ever heard about guys, women and guys having makeup sex after they fight? But then you get in a fight and what does it do? She doesn't talk to you for a week. What's the difference? Because you fought from your head. You didn't fight from your emotions. You didn't connect from your emotions, right? You didn't ground her out. That's the difference. And she's trying to, when she's doing that, going to that Kali or that testing energy, she's trying to pull you back into your body and get you out of your head. So I'm going to do a quick, a quick thing. It's just, a, just to show you guys a little polarity. So um, just go ahead and do it. You do, do it a little harder. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to do it a little harder. That was, that was kind of... Harder? Yeah. Harder. <laughs> okay. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, I'll step closer. Good. So what I'm simulating here is she's pushing on me, right? So do it a couple times. Good. Sorry. Good. <laughs> See, that's what I want. I want her to giggle and laugh a little bit. And there's a reason for that, okay? is I'm not shrinking, I'm not getting mad, I'm not, I usually do this with a slap, but I'm not gonna do it like that on the camera, where she comes at me really hard. And what this does, it, it just simulates this idea that the feminine is gonna test you, it's gonna push on you, it's gonna dance with you. Can you step into it and own it? Can you be like, yeah, I'm right here? Because what is that gonna do? If I'm the solid picture frame for, for her and she feels I'm not breaking, and I stay solid without losing control, without losing my mind, without yelling and screaming back, that causes her to relax more in the end because her man is being solid. Okay, did you want to say anything on that? Yeah, it's, it's more like, like if, if I do this and you go into a fight or you go back or if you just say, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not, it, you, you, the, the attitude will be more like, okay, that's your problem it's not mine, I'm here. It's yeah. yours because you just hit me, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's, of course, that would okay. like. Okay, to demonstrate what she's talking about, hit, hit me one more time. I'm sorry, I mean, are you upset? He's, Please don't do that. Did you see, you see the reaction <laughs> difference? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, come forward again real quick, so we're in the camera. So do it one more time. And so now I step into it, right here. Do you guys feel the polarity difference in that? Okay, and that's demonstrating testing. Now that can be done with words. We use the physical so you guys can see it so it's obvious, but really it's most likely gonna be done with words. She's gonna just say something, you're gonna say something back, and it's the energy behind the words that cause the effect. Okay? Okay, cool, thank you. So give Giselle a round of applause. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> So, um, what you say carries a lot of weight, but it's how you say it. And when you understand all the subcommunication, how you say things affects people immensely. 
Uh, has anybody had the experience when you go out to meet uh, a woman and you give her a nice compliment and she's just like, oh, thank you, and walks away? Okay, who raised your hand if you had that experience? Okay, what's happening there? Most likely, and I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but what's happening there? Didn't make her feel anything. Exactly. Because you weren't grounded enough or masculine enough or you're in your nice guy and you were, you were bringing this like, hi, I just want to tell you, you know, you're, you're, really, uh, you're really pretty or you have beautiful eyes. You might give a great compliment. You have a great way about you. A great, but it doesn't, none of it connects because when a guy who's not bringing his masculine energy gives her that compliment, he's half saying, I don't want to bother you. I'm half here. I'm half not. You know, are you upset? What do you think a real masculine guy who's grounded, he's going to step right into the tension. See, I'm taking the tension away when I do that. But if I walk up and say, you know, there's something about you, and I just had to come say hi, there's a whole different energy in that. Because now I'm stepping into the tension more. I'm, I'm saying, I'm not afraid of the tension. I'm a man. I can handle it. And I'm offering this up to you. And it's a whole different energy. It's a whole different way of being. And this causes a whole different effect, not just in women, but in people around you. Who's in sales? You, try, you shift this, this, this attitude and this energy in your sales, it's going to change everything. Your sales are going to go through the roof because of it. Um, I jumped ahead here. Uh, so I want to talk about one more thing really quick. Um, and that's... Uh, a vulnerability. Now I mentioned it earlier. Once you've got the tension, the tension is the conduit for the vulnerability. So as I connect with you through tension right here, there's the tension. I relax into my body and I start to get curious or something. You can start to feel my emotions. And that's the real conversation that's being had. We have this com these conversations through emotions. We're actually sharing emotions back and forth, not through words. The words are what's put on top of the emotions. If you try to have a conversation with words and there's, ab and there's actually no emotion in them, then the conversation's gonna fall flat. It's gonna die. That's what most guys run into when they first start doing this stuff because they run out trying to master the words. And they're not paying attention to what's going on underneath the words. So vulnerability is really important, but it's not neediness. A lot of people think that vulnerability is neediness, but it's not neediness. It's something completely different. Neediness is, okay, I'll give you a real example. I broke up with this girl, and this is the first time I did this, and I was scared shitless. And um, we had broken up, and uh, I was really kind of bothered by it. And, I, and I, somebody told me, a, a wise person told me, go to her and be vulnerable and tell her how you feel. And I'm like, well, that's never worked before. That just causes them to run the other way. I'm not going to do that. And he said, no, 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 but you're doing it all wrong. He said, go to her, put it out there. Don't ask for anything in return. Do it like a man and then step back. And if she still treats you like garbage, she's not worth being with. And I said, OK, I'm going to try this. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to try this. And I remember going, she, she worked in a um, she was a musician, and she was playing uh, 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 in uh, music. She was playing, plays the violin, and she was playing at this bar one night in, in a band. So I went there at the end of the night, and I saw her. And I remember I was scared shitless. I was kind of shaking from it. And I walked with her as she left out towards her car, and I said, I really want to talk to you. And at first she was like, oh, I'm busy. I'm, she was nervous. She was, she's still mad at me. And then she was getting in her car. I looked at her, and I said, no, I really want to tell you something. And she went, oh, really? And then she turned, looked me dead in the eyes, got right in the tension with me. I felt that it was really distinctive and said, what? And right then I was like, oh, this is interesting. I didn't expect that. And then I looked at her and I, I, I said, okay, I got to do this the way he said it. Now, I don't remember the exact words, so I'm going to give a little paraphrase of what I said. But I said something to the effect of, I'm moving away soon. I don't know if I'm ever going to see you again. So I want to say this before I leave. I care about you. I want to work this out. I want to make something work between us. And if you don't feel the same way, I'm fine. I can handle that. But I'm not going to leave without saying it. And then I just shut up. And it was amazing. Because I had never seen a girl do this. She went from normally in the past when I would say stuff like, I care about you. Let, we can make this work. Come on, let's make this work. We're meant to be together or something like that. It made him run the other way. Why? Because it's kind of begging. It's needy. It's not vulnerability. That's needy. When I said it that way, it had a whole different effect. 
we sat, she got out of the car and we sat on the curb and talked for 45 minutes about everything. And it was like this amazing like bubble type experience and it was really beautiful. And it was all from my willingness to lose her, to make my statement and let her go and be a man about it, but to at least say what I had to say. And that changed everything. Okay. Um, so vulnerability is essential. And if you develop these two parts, and you can see how they're feeling, they're both feeling-based aspects. Like when I'm working with her, I can feel the tension with her. You guys could feel the tension with her. When I'm being vulnerable, I can feel the vulnerability. It's not something I think about as a logical concept anymore. Matter of fact, I want to shut off as much thought as possible. That's what changes things. So I got one more thing I want to quickly share. Um, um, who, who here really wants to have amazing sex? Raise your hand. Everybody should raise their hand, right? Okay. There's two things you need if you want to have amazing sex with your girlfriend that are essential. And a lot of guys miss this. Matter of fact, it took me a while to even get this down because it was hard at first. Um, the first thing I talked about is the tension skills, right? You got to have tension skills. So, the first thing I do with any girl I'm getting intimate with is I ask her what her fantasies are. I ask her what she wants to experience in life, what she's done. I want to know about her. I want to know what she wants, where she wants to go. And there's an essential key ingredient in doing this. When you do it, you can't judge her for anything she says. You can't make fun of it. You can't mock it. Because she's going to probably say stuff a little bit at a time, right? Because what happens with women? Society judges women for loving sex gives women a hard time. But yet, women are just as sexual as we are. They're beautiful sexual creatures. They're probably more sexual than we are in a lot of ways, right? And so, I had asked this woman once, it was a girl I was dating, and I said, what are you, what's your fantasies? And she was a little more open-minded than other women. So she came really fast with it. And, uh, and I want to ask you guys, I want you to really take this in. If this was a girl you were dating, and you were getting serious with, and she said this, I want you to think about what your reaction would be. And I asked her what her fantasies were, and she said, well, one of them is I want to fuck five cowboys in the back of a pickup truck in a field. And see, and if you get all nervous and start laughing and start pushing away, right, which is what a lot of guys will do, because it's like, this is a girl I care about, and she just told me she wants to fuck five guys, and you see what I mean? What's going to happen there? How much longer is she going to trust you with her fantasies? Now, I'm not saying you have to do it, okay? I'm not saying you have to go do this, but you can't judge her for it. You can't make her wrong for it. So the right answer is really take that in, feel it, and say thank you. That's beautiful. Don't tease her. Don't laugh. Otherwise, she's, you know, she's not going to open up and tell you more things later. That's what you want. You want her to feel completely safe sharing every fantasy with you. And you don't ever want to judge her for any of them. So you can set her free to feel comfortable with you. Number two. So in that, by the way, is tension and vulnerability, right? So you've got to be willing to be vulnerable. You've got to be willing to be in the tension. You've got to feel it all. You can't do it from your head. And then number two is you've got to protect her fantasies. If she's sharing her real, deep, personal information with you, you can't run and tell her friends. You can't run and <clears throat> brag to her friends that my girlfriend just said she really wants to have a threesome. And we're going to have a threesome. Now that's between you and her. Do you understand? That's your secret. You want, it's, it's, as you two go deeper into this intimacy, it's, it's a, something you're doing together. And so you might find that as you make her feel really comfortable about her sexuality, you make her feel really safe, you make her feel really empowered and free, that she starts to open up more and more. And she starts to want to know what your fantasies are. She starts to want to know what you want to do. And then your sex life at that point starts to improve. Now, as you start to go do these things, again, you can't start freaking out and getting weird because that's also where guys with, without much experience start to lose it. And that's something you have to work on. But the real key here is stop judging women for, for loving sex. Set them free, guys. If you guys want amazing sex, give them the freedom to have amazing sex lives. And that's going to require being comfortable in the tension and being comfortable in the vulnerability. Both at the same time. OK. 
Okay. Um, any questions? We've got about five minutes left. Uh, do you think some women are more uh, perceptive? Uh, you, we're all trying to perceive emotions, in men versus women. Do you think some women are more yes. uh, perceptive yeah. based uh, on what? Usually the de their level of femininity, how much femininity okay. they've developed in their life. Okay, like um, culturally, like Russians? I mean, uh, yeah, I find your Eastern American. European women can be very uh, in tune with emotions and feelings. Uh, when I go to Romania a lot, I'm shocked at how much the women there can read on you. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy. Now, it's the same thing with men, though, as men develop more of their femininity or their vulnerable side. They, they also develop more of the ability to read emotions. So it's really about developing that side, whereas the other side, the masculinity, is more about the tension. So if somebody's in more in the middle, they're going to have less ability. But on average, women, because they're more feminine by nature, have more ability to read. So. I have a quick like, example, because I met a Russian woman, and I have, like, a lot of Russians in Chicago, and this girl, like, it was like, I didn't, I met her on the street, and I, afterwards, I was like, I didn't, didn't know what I said or what I did. It was just like, it kind of flowed. Mm -hmm. And then as we met over time, like, she was into this meditation stuff and working on herself, and, like, mm -hmm. went to a library, and she's like, yeah, I read this book, I read this book. I'm like, wow, you were into this kind of deep stuff for a while. Yeah, that's so that's she had like worked on her vibe and all that. It's very common. We do a lot of workshops in Romania, and it almost shocks me with some of the women. We had one student say we have one girl super in feeling, like she can feel every little subtle, like the littlest thing. And we had two students; they would like stand with her and look and, and do the, some of the gazing work. And they always they're like, "Oh my God, she's like staring into my soul. It's freaking me out because they could she could see everything inside them, and it's kind of freaky, but I love it so." Any other questions? Um, yes, you said that, I guess, the two types that um, get handling tension wrong are those that avoid it and those that try to bulldoze through it without uh, right. you know, being able to feel it. Um, on that, which one would you say is in a better position to learn how to get it right? Um, I the avoider, if you're avoiding tension, you're, you're going to have a real hard time growing. If you're bulldozing and we can tune it back, it's usually a little better. Now, the problem is that I run into a lot is there's, on top of that, there's a lot of defense mechanisms in the human body. So um, some people have a lot of walls between them and their heart, their ability to feel. Some guys come in, they feel literally like stone to me when I'm working with them. I'm like breaking through stone or armor. And, um, and so even though they may not be bulldozing, until we get through a lot of that armor, they won't be able to feel much. So we got to kind of bring it down through a lot of exercises. And, uh, but on average, err on the side of a little too much because you're going to get more results that way. The, if you err on the side of too little, you're not going to grow. You're just going to constantly be, that's what I did in the beginning. I was always trying to figure out a way around the tension. I was trying to figure out if I learn hypnosis, if I learn EFT, if I learn this, I learn that, and I won't. And then one day I'll just be free of all the fear, and I'll just go do it. But it doesn't work that way. You got to take action first. Then it stirs up all the garbage inside you. Then I can use the hypnosis or EFT or whatever technique I want to use because they, they all work to some degree. But if I'm not taking action, none of it works. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? No here. Yeah, I loved it, by the way. Um, Thank you. Talking about like very analytical people, I think a lot of us here are pretty analytical. I'm sure it was, you came from that background as well. What's the first, what are a couple few tips that you recommend, you know, starting today or tomorrow that we could implement uh, and see, start seeing some better results? Great question. Um, meditation's great. I mean, meditation in and of itself, but not meditation where you isolate in a little bubble and just hang out by yourself. Because some people do that and they go in these bliss states, right? Uh, meditation where you practice feeling more and more. You're opening more and more to the environment. Like, I like it when people get into a nice safe space and meditate, and then they get used to that, and they get used to feeling open, and then they start taking it out. Like, go meditate in a park, and then go meditate in a more noisy environment. Learn to kind of ground and feel it all, instead of shutting off to it all. Because if you just meditate in your nice safe space all the time, which is great practice, but then you go out to, um, 
say, a noisy environment one night, and uh, you're, it's not going to help you. It might help you to some degree, but you're going to get out in that noisy environment, and you're going to want to shut down again because all this energy is coming at you. So you've got to learn to expand it into, into bigger ranges. So meditation is one. Any body-based movement, like yoga, that's what yoga was intended to do, get you into your body. So if you're doing the yoga as exercise, it's not going to do much for you. If you're doing it to feel more into your body, into your nervous system, because we have a gut brain, right? If, if you guys don't believe you have a gut brain, Google um, gut as a second brain. And there's a whole science around how the gut is a, an instinctual brain now. And uh, if you get down into that part of your body, it changes everything. It starts to pull you out of your head. So uh, yoga, um, any type of body-based work. I think Brazilian jiu-jitsu is great for guys getting down into their body, um, feeling more of their, their core, moving from your dantian, your hara, your second chakra, whatever you want to call it, that kind of stuff. So thank you. One more question. This came from online. Is It says a lot of guys join the self-help, you know, dating, seduction, community to get better but move in the wrong directions. What's the best place to start for a guy that's new? I, um, it's a good question. I believe that uh, I'm not a big fan if you're, if you're, it depends on, see this is a tough question to answer because it depends on you. If you came to me, I would look at you and I'd say, are you super analytical? Are you super numbed out? Are you uh, really dramatic, overly dramatic? And I would kind of give you a different answer depending on that. But one thing I would say is be careful with learning all kinds of pickup lines and routines. Uh, that's, that's just my opinion. Not everybody agrees with that. I feel like you got to start working on feeling your body more, which is what we just talked about. Connecting to uh, that second brain, getting, getting into your body, getting into feeling, moving from feeling more. And that's where your life is going to change. Um, so uh, most, of, I would imagine a lot of the instructors here are amazing instructors and just getting on and, and learning from their, their YouTube channels, learning from uh, their teachings because it's really the, the new school of thought in that way. Um, and, um, and I'll give you one, one thing you can do, and you could all do this, is uh, create a, t a tension or a confidence journal to develop your tension or confidence. I had one guy do this, he changed his whole life and that's all he did. He would send me email, uh, Facebook messages all the time telling me about the changes in his life. I got 9,000 euro raise every year, he was in Europe. I got a new girlfriend, I moved into a new house. So what he did was he, he, uh, he took a journal and every day he picked four or five areas he was avoiding tension and uh, he would write them down. I mean, he might be out, he'd be out doing it. So like standing there and say, well I wanna go just say hi to this pretty girl, right? And I would, he would write down, say hi to her. And then he would note on a scale of one to 10, how difficult that seemed. If it was a 10, that's gonna be jumping the Grand Canyon. So he'd find something that still moved him in that direction that was more like a seven or a six. So he might just go over and ask her the time to start with. Might do that 10, 20, 30 times before he moves on to the next thing. And until that, uh, until that six or seven goes way down to like a two, three, or a four and then he ups the bar again. So he would do this every day in four or five, six areas. I mean, I, there were days I would do this all day. I would just keep journaling stuff all day, learning to step into a little bit more tension and a little bit more tension. Then after you do it, you write down what you learned from it. Not what went wrong, but what you learned from it. And once you write down what you, you learned from it, then at the end of the night, you review it before you go to bed so you can take it into your sleep. You can take it into your dreams and, um, and process it while you sleep. So that's a great example of developing some tension skills. And, uh, and there's sometimes I'll go out for an hour and I'll just do that for an hour, writing as much as I can in one hour, and then I put it away. Don't overdo it. Um, or some days I'll just say, I'm gonna do four things today. I'm gonna find four things throughout the day or five things. And this guy did this every day for I don't know how long, and he changed his whole life. And he, keep, he kept sending me Facebook messages. It was awesome. He sent me a picture of the journal and what it looked like because he bought this really nice journal to do it with leather bound and all this stuff so you know stuff like that can really shift you so okay guys I want to I want to thank you for uh, uh, having me here it was great um, I'll be here throughout the weekend so if anybody's got questions feel free to ask ask me questions and um, and uh, somebody told me to give out the website the website's the the fearlessman.com and the YouTube channel is the same thing so uh, thank you guys good stuff Brian Bajan.